Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today, and it's important, is October the 28th, 2020. Let's talk football futures, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in sports betting, you're not going to find more mispriced lines, in my opinion, than in the futures market. Whether that's NFL, Major League Baseball, National, Basket National Basketball Association, the futures market is chronically mispriced. For some reason, some excellent teams fall out of favor. Gamblers get excited by what they're seeing on TV with other teams in the division. And they forget the fundamentals. The fact that certain teams are proven. That certain teams might have gone through a slow patch where they lost big games with backup quarterbacks on national television. But that doesn't mean over the long run that the team is not going to show its high quality. Now, I've talked about this team in the past, even if you have a futures bet on this team already. I don't believe you can look away from the odds being offered right now. Let's name an actual site. Let's be adults. You're going to have to figure out whether this website is legal in your jurisdiction. But today, October the 28th, on intertops.eu, the San Francisco 49ers, a team up in the fourth quarter, by more than a touchdown in last year's Super Bowl. Right? Again, up by more than a touchdown in the fourth quarter of last year's Super Bowl. In other words, the reigning NFC champions. That team, the 49ers, today, late October. Right? Halloween is three days away. The 49ers are going off at 28 to 1. 28 to 1. Now, the way I view life is you want to assemble a betting portfolio. And when there's some glaring mispricing, some ridiculous value, where you're getting incredible leverage that you could hedge later, you have to add that to your betting portfolio. Let's look at the 49ers carefully, right now, right, right now. And let's ask ourselves if there's a better value on the board, given that the Niners are 28 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. In other words, I bet a dollar, a dollar. I win $28 plus the return of my dollar if the Niners win the Super Bowl. If I take this bet and the Niners are in playoff contention late in the week, excuse me, late in the year, for games 15 and 16, understand at that point, I can hedge the play. Right? If I don't believe in the Niners, but they're in contention and I'm getting decent odds late in the season, at that point, I can say, okay, well, let me get my $1 back. Let's say the Niners make it into the playoffs. Then start winning games in the playoffs. Well, there are worse things that can happen to you in life than to have a team that you got at 28 to 1 actually delivering on the play. Right here, you have such a big margin to deal with. It would be hard to mess up. So let's look at the Niners. Why are they 28 to 1? Now let me just say, they play in the toughest division in football, the NFC West. They are in last place. Seattle, the Cardinals, the Rams are all above the Niners. But would it surprise you to know that the Niners aren't even 500. They're above 500. <laughs> In other words, the casino is offering you 28 to 1 odds on a team that today 
has four wins and only three losses. Folks, we're not even in the second half of the season yet. The Niners are already above 500. Would it surprise you to know? Let's just look at the top two teams in the division. Right? The Seahawks in six games. Keep in mind, the Niners have played seven. The Seahawks in six games have given up 172 points in the season. Right? Six games they've given up 172 points. The Cardinals in seven games have given up 146 points. Right? The Cardinals are an interesting team you need to keep an eye on. Right? One more game played than the Seahawks. They've given up less points. Right? 26 less points. Well, did you know the Niners? who only have one more loss than the Cardinals. In other words, one game separates the Niners and the Cardinals seven games into the season. Did you know the Niners, after seven games, that's one more than Seattle, have given up 136 points? Ten less than the Cardinals. 36 points less than the Seahawks, with one more game that they've played than the Seahawks have played. Folks, you're talking about an elite, an elite defense. In fact, if you go by rankings, look at the stats. The Niners are in the top 10 in the National Football League, both offensively and defensively. Did you know that? Right now, the Rams, in seven games, have scored 176 points. Right? Cooper Cuff, Jared Goff, Robert Woods, high-powered offense, right? Seven games, 176 points. The Niners, again, the reigning NFC champions, have actually scored five more points than that. 181 points. Now let's think this through, folks. Jimmy Garoppolo, the Niners' starting quarterback, was injured for part of this year. Right? They lost a nationally televised game with Nick Mullins at quarterback. They've been so desperate, they even had the third string guy, Bethard, play quarterback for a stretch. In other words, this is an injured Niner team. Debo Samuels, key player on the offense. He's been out for periods. Right, so the Niners have been hit by a hurricane of injuries at key positions, like quarterback. And what's it gotten them? A 4-3 and three record within one game of the Rams. A defense that statistically is better than the Seahawk and the Arizona Cardinal defense. Understand too, I think it's a safe statement here to say that only one team out of the NFC East is going to make the playoffs. Right? In other words, you're going to have wild card possibilities. You know, if only one team makes it out of one division, Understand what that does. That increases the chances of a team like the Rams, excuse me, like the 49ers, getting into the playoffs as a wild card. Let's look around a little bit, too, at some of the other divisions. Folks, the Bears right now, great defense, subpar offense. Statistically, subpar offense. Other than the Packers, who have a subpar defense. Those are the only two teams above 500 in the NFC North, right? The other two teams are the Lions, who had to pull a miracle, had to pull a rabbit out of the hat to beat the lowly Atlanta Falcons, and of course that got the Lions to 3-3. Three and three. And of course the Vikings, who are 1-5, and five, right? Understand, in the NFC South, the Falcons are out of it, they're 1-6, the Panthers are below 500. They're 3 and 4. The Niners have the jump on those teams. 
right? The Buccaneers and Saints, one or both of those teams are going to make the playoffs. But let's just say we're not even at the halfway point. How are you getting 28 to 1 odds on a team that just won the conference, is above 500, statistically has a better defense than the division leader Seahawks and the second team, the Cardinals, right? Kyler Murray is a young quarterback, folks, right? Young guys have moments of brilliance, but he doesn't have the experience that Jimmy Garoppolo has, right? Let's remember, Garoppolo has Super Bowl experience. This is post-Patriot, where he was, you know, Tom Brady's understudy in a program filled with brilliance. I like the head coach of the Cardinals. He's excellent. But understand, he doesn't have the experience of Shanahan, who was the offensive coordinator in that disastrous Atlanta Falcons Super Bowl that they lost to the Patriots and then of course ends up back in the Super Bowl with the 49ers. In other words, the Niners have the experience. Their core has been together and they are performing. Now betting is really an odds play. I don't know if the Niners are going to win the NFC again, right? I don't know that. But what I do know is that they shouldn't be 28 <laughs> to 1 right now. By contrast, the New Orleans Saints, and let's be clear on the Saints, right? Drew Brees has a problem at this age throwing deep, doesn't he? Right? You know the Saint offense, a lot of dink and dunks, a lot of misdirection, and oh, here's a screen pass to Alvin Kamara. Right? Understand the Saints right now are at half the odds. Half the odds of the San Francisco 49ers. You're only getting 14 to 1 on the Saints. I would say that's a compelling value. But the Niners are off the page. Right? The Niners made the Super Bowl last year. How are you getting twice the odds on a team that already has a top 10 defense and an above 500 record. It makes no sense, right? The play I'm recommending here is, even if you have a position on the Niners, throw a couple more dollars on them. I mean, just ask yourself, when is the next time that you're going to get 28 to 1 odds? Again, 28 to to what odds on a team that defensively has given up fewer points in one more game than the Seattle Seahawks, a team that just came out of the Super Bowl, a team that has elite rushing attack, right? It's an elite rushing attack and that just had one of the better drafts, right? Look at the guys the Niners added in last year's draft. And look at how they're doing, right? If this team gets healthy, the rest of the league's going to have to look out. If you lock in 28 to 1 odds, then if the Niners are in contention for the playoffs or if they make the playoffs, then you're in the hot seat. Even if you sit here today and you think, oh, I think this is Russell Wilson's year, right? Even though Metcalf is a very young receiver. Let's not, let's not confuse him with receivers who've done it for years. Metcalf is a very young receiver. Seattle's so panicked about their defense, they're out there adding guys right now. Read the headlines today. There's going to be a lack of continuity for a while there. Also understand, COVID's an interesting thing, right? COVID's taken away home field advantage from some teams. So Seattle doesn't have that vibrant 12th man advantage that they had when people were able to actually attend the games without social distancing. 
Let me also add that you know a team is dangerous. You know a team is well coached and has a lot of things going for them when they can win on the road. Where else are you going to get a team seven weeks into the season at 28 to 1 odds? Again, intertops.eu today. Right now, as I make this video, at 28 to 1 odds, where else are you going to get a team above 500 that right now is 3 and 0 on the road? Coming off a Super Bowl appearance. Right? The Niners have won two games in a row. This is a talent laden, experienced team coming off a Super Bowl appearance. And if you're a gambler in the sports book looking for value, good luck finding better value than 28 to 1 odds on a team like this. Right? My recommendation in this futures video is consider throwing some futures money on the San Francisco 49ers right here. Right? Um, again, for everything the Cardinals have done, for everything the Rams have done. They're literally just one game ahead of the Niners with more than half the season left to play. Right? And I can tell you, you're not getting 28 to 1 odds on the Rams. Right? I can, I can just tell you that right now. In fact, let's give actual odds, right? Just for comparative purposes. The Rams right now are going off at 18 to 1. With the 49ers, you're getting them at 28 to 1. Right? The Cardinals, again, young, untested, they're going off at 25 to 1. So here, I get the reigning NFC champions. Right? Reigning. I get a team that's unbeaten on the road. And I'm getting them at longer odds than the Rams and the Arizona Cardinals with a veteran quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. I like this. I like this play. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. You do what you think is right. I consider 28 to 1 on the 49ers, right? Almost two full months into the season. Where the Niners are 3 and 0 on the road, have won two in a row. Have dealt with their starting quarterback missing games and they're still four and three i consider that compelling value that's how i see it let me hear from you i hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video thanks for stopping by